Hi, everyone, and welcome back to U University. I'm Dr. Kelly. Well, apparently February is going to be the month of snow for us here in rural Illinois. We have had snow almost every day this week, usually one or two inches a day, but one day we got four inches and it's snowing today and we're supposed to get more tomorrow. I mean, we don't have snow drifts up to the roof or anything, but it's just enough to cover the roads and make driving hazardous. So just when we thought we were on our way to spring, Mother Nature reminds us that we're still in the middle of winter. Oh, I wanted to tell you why my video recording schedule is all goofed up or has been goofed up. Normally I put out a video on Mondays, but my past two videos have been on different days. Um, and it's because I've been so sidetracked at school lately with a lot of extra meetings the past couple of weeks. So that's what's been going on with me and hopefully I can get back on track now. Today for you, I am finishing my big box bargain series and I have nine yarns to show you. In this video, I'm gonna be focusing on what I consider to be workhorse yarns. And these are yarns that are nice, sturdy, comfortable, easy care, and a good value. They are great substitutes for more expensive yarns of the same weight. And they knit up into countless projects like blankets, sweaters, mittens, scarves, hats, children's clothes, and even stuffed animals that will hold up during everyday use. So if you're trying to keep the cost of a larger project like a sweater or a blanket down to a reasonable price, then these might be options to consider. So without further ado, let's go right into the classroom. Okay, I'm gonna start this review of workhorse yarns from the craft stores with some cotton and cotton blend yarns. And the first one I'm gonna talk about is one that I know a lot of you will be familiar with, and that is the peaches and cream. This is kind of the definition of workhorse yarn because it is so durable. It is worsted weight, 100% cotton, and it's made in Canada. You can get this from Walmart and the price is around $2.50. In one of these little skeins, you get 120 yards in 71 grams, but it also comes in larger size cones, which are 400 grams with 700 yards of yarn for around $8. This yarn holds up like nothing else. You can throw it in the washing machine and dryer, no problem. I love that it's so indestructible and easy care. It comes in over 60 different colorways. Some are solid colors, some are stripes, and some are variegated. Um, this colorway that I have here is called bright blue, and you can find pretty much any color you want, either in person at your store or by ordering it online. There are also yarns that are basically the same as this at Joann's and Michael's. Um, the brand that they have is called Sugar and Cream, but it's essentially the same thing. The recommended needle size is a US 7 or 4.5 millimeter. Now, you know I always like to look at the star ratings and reviews people have given different yarns online. And it's weird, but I was only really able to find a handful of ratings on this peaches and cream yarn. But all the ones I found were very positive and averaged about 4.7 star stars out of five stars. Positive reviews talk about its durability, its softness, easy laundering, great color options, low price, and nice stitch definition. There were a few drawbacks mentioned, even from people who gave it a good rating, and those were things like the colors faded after washing, um, lack of elasticity made it hard to work with, which is going to be true for any cotton yarn, and some people thought the yarn felt stiff. But it's still a very popular yarn. If you look on Ravelry, you'll see that there are over 41,000 projects made with peaches and cream yarn. And by far, the number one project in this yarn is dishcloths. That's what I've always used to, to used it to make, and it makes awesome dishcloths. I always tell people I have not bought a dishcloth in a store for over 20 years. 
Dishcloths made with this yarn will last years and years and years. And I have some right here that I've recently made. So you can see some examples of the different colors. And my favorite go-to pattern for dishcloths, and apparently this is true for everyone else on Ravelry as well, is called Grandmother's Favorite Dishcloth. It's the one knit corner to corner, and it's got this pretty uh, little border on it. This is a super easy, mindless pattern that you can whip out in probably 15 to 30 minutes. Knitting up a set of these dishcloths makes great housewarming gifts or hostess gifts. Now, if you're interested in what else people are making with peaches and cream yarn, it's a lot of household items. I found these beautiful crocheted hot pads and here's another crochet project. It's a bowl cozy, which are really popular right now. I've always loved these Swiffer covers like this one. So you put this over the bottom of your Swiffer and you can dust your floors without throwing out all those disposable ones in the trash. With this, you can just put it in the washer and dryer and it's ready for next time. And how about this gorgeous blanket? And then there's this bag you could use as a market bag or a beach tote. There are also a lot of baby and children's items like this adorable stuffed elephant and this baby hat, this cute little striped dress, and these sweet baby shoes. So yeah, these are some ideas for projects that you can make with this peaches and cream yarn. Now this next yarn I'm going to talk about isn't cotton, but it kind of goes along with the peaches and cream yarn I just talked about. So I thought I would include it here. This is Red Heart Scrubby, which is 100% polyester. It's an eyelash yarn with a chain construction, which means that the, the main strand of yarn is not plies that are spun together like most other yarns are made, but instead it's essentially knit into tiny loops. The eyelash characteristic means that it has these long strands of fiber that stick out from the main body of the yarn that look kind of like eyelashes. When it's knit up, the fabric looks very texturized with the little eyelash fibers sticking out all over it. Red Heart Scrubby comes in little skeins of this size, which are 100 grams and 92 yards. Again, it is 100% polyester, and you can find it at Joann's for about $4.50 regular price. I saw that it's currently on sale for $3, although I'm not sure how long that sale will be going on. It is available in 27 colors, and this particular one is called Ocean. Some are solid colors and some are variegated. Um, there are a couple of other varieties of Scrubby, which are Scrubby Sparkle, um, it's another one made out of polyester, but it has little glittery pieces in it. And Scrubby Cotton, which still has this texturized appearance, but it's made out of cotton, so it's going to be absorbent and a little softer. Now, the recommended needle size for this is a US 8 or 5 millimeter. This is another easy care yarn. You can throw it into the washing machine and tumble dry. The online reviews for Scrubby uh, are pretty good. On the Joann's website, there were almost 200 reviews that I found, and the average was 4.6 stars. 80% of the reviewers had given it a five-star rating. And what are the reviewers saying? Well, they're saying that it's easy to work with, there's an awesome selection of colors, it's economical, easy care, and the items made with it are long-lasting. There were only a few low ratings, but those people said that the yarn was too soft to really scrub anything. Um, the stitches are hard to see on the needles, and the yarn is slick, so the stitches slide right off the needles. And I will agree that the eyelash texture does obscure the stitches a bit on the needle, and you'll probably want to use a wood or bamboo needle when working with this yarn so that the stitches are less likely to slip off the needles. But still, people are really liking this one too. Now Red Heart Scrubby is marketed as dishcloth yarn. Because it's got this texture when knit up, it's good for cleaning dishes. 
There are over 1,600 projects made out of this yarn on Ravelry, and the vast majority of them are some kind of dishcloth. There are some simple ones that are knit and others that are crocheted. There are even some that mix the peaches and cream yarn with the scrubby yarn, like this dishcloth with a scrubby corner. This also makes nice washcloths, like this one that's just a basic knit square. And then you could easily make a soap sack out of it, which is what I did. Um, here I just cast on 20 stitches on a US size 8 or 5 millimeter needle and then knit about 10 inches. This created a rectangle that was about 5 by 10 inches. And I just made an envelope out of it by folding up the rectangle about a third of the way up and whip stitching the sides. And that leaves the flap with a pocket. You just simply insert a bar of soap into the pocket and then fold the flap down inside. So that gives you this nice exfoliating washcloth. It's super easy. There's no buttons or anything to worry about. The only drawback that I'll say is that I didn't find the yarn too enjoyable to work with. It can be a little rough feeling on your hands and with all the eyelash fibers sticking out, like I said, it can be hard to see what you're doing when you're knitting with it. Um, maybe it would be easier for crochet, I'm not sure. But besides washcloths and dishcloths, I found a few other projects made out of this yarn that I thought were worth showing. So someone made this cute Hawaiian grass skirt for their daughter's doll. And then I found this knit cactus that I thought was really fun. And look at this adorable llama hat where the llama hair is made out of this scrubby yarn. So Red Heart Scrubby is good to use for utility items like washcloths and dishcloths, but it can be used for other craft items as well. Okay, so back to the cotton yarns. This next one is called Cotton Fair and it's by Premier Yarns. It's a sport weight yarn that is a cotton acrylic blend. It's 52% cotton and 48% acrylic and you get 317 yards in a 100 gram ball. It is machine washable, but not tumble dry. Um, I would lay it flat to dry. The recommended needle size is a US 4 or 3.5 millimeter. It comes in 28 different colorways. Some are solid and some are variegated. The colors I have here are called bright peach, and this one is called turquoise. And as you can see, I've already used this one. This yarn runs about $5 at Joann's and Michael's, but of course you can always shop sales and use coupons to decrease the cost. Now I saw around 200 ratings of Cotton Fair yarn on different websites, and the average was about a 4.8 stars. 80% of the ratings were five stars, and those raters said the yarn was great to work with, it didn't split like a lot of cotton yarns do. It had generous yardage and held up well in the wash. The biggest complaints were that the craft stores only carry a limited selection of colors. So even people who gave it five stars complained about the lack of inventory. But honestly, if you want the, if you want the choice of all the different colors, order it directly from the Premier Yarns website where they have all the colors available and it's still only $5 a ball. And the only other complaint that people that I ha saw that people had um, was that people didn't realize it was was not 100% cotton. So if you need 100% cotton yarn, then don't get this one because it is a blend. I personally think this is a beautiful yarn. It's very soft, much softer than most 100% cotton yarns. It has a nice tight twist which will improve the stitch definition and it will be less likely to split when you're working with it. I love the blend of acrylic and cotton. You get the lightweight feel of cotton and the absorbency, but the acrylic adds body to the yarn. 
As I've said many times in my videos, by itself, cotton has no elasticity whatsoever. That makes it difficult to work with because when you're crocheting or knitting, sometimes you really struggle with those stitches, especially if you have a tight gauge. And I know a lot of people with hand issues like arthritis or carpal tunnel problems can have a really difficult time working with pure cotton. The acrylic in this yarn adds elasticity and that makes it way easier to produce stitches and just faster to progress with your projects. The acrylic will also add strength to the yarn. The drawback is that acrylic is very prone to pilling. You know, those unsightly little balls of fiber that collect on the surface of fabric, which is basically caused by the friction of wearing something or washing it. Um, cotton is not prone to pilling, but acrylic is, so this, with this blend you might find a little more pilling than you would with pure cotton. I personally like a cotton acrylic blends for making things like lightweight summer garments and baby things. Let's take a look at Ravelry and see what people are making with this yarn. I do see a lot of baby items like this beautiful sweater. And look at this gorgeous christening dress. There are also some stuffed animals like this cute little elephant and this snuggly bear and some baby blankets like this one. There are also some beautiful shawls like this colorful one and this lacy one. There are some adult pullover sweaters like this nice one and this really pretty lace skirt. And then some hats like this one and this one. Now what I've used Cotton Fair yarn for is chemo hats. Now this is not going to be for keeping someone's head warm in the winter, but it is nice for summer. And the pattern that I use a lot for chemo hats is the Lace Edged Women's Hat by Julie Hentz. It's a free pattern on Ravelry and it calls for a DK weight yarn. Um, this is a little bit lighter weight, it's a sport weight, but it works okay. Um, this is one that I made out of the turquoise yarn. It's very lightweight and soft. And I really like the lacy pattern around the edge, not only for decoration, but because it's not tight against the head like ribbing would be. So that makes it a little more comfortable for the chemo patients. Okay, so that is Premier Yarns Cotton Fair. I have a couple of other uh, acrylic cotton blends that are pretty good workhorse yarns. And this one is called Dye Works from Yarn B. And this is $6 regular price at Hobby Lobby. It's 50% acrylic and 50% cotton. Each skein is 120 yards and 100 grams. It's bulky weight yarn and the suggested needle size is a US 10.5, which is a 6.5 millimeter. It looks like it comes in nine different colorways and they all have this kind of tonal look of lights and darks in the same color. I guess that's the idea behind the Dye Works name because it looks like it's hand, hand dyed. So anyway, uh, this colorway that I have here is called Washed Violet. Like the last one I just talked about, it's machine washable but not tumble dry. You would want to lay this flat to dry. Now for this yarn, there aren't that many ratings online, um, but the ones I could find were very positive. Comments were about the softness and pretty colors, as well as the good value. The only negative remark that I saw was that someone said they bought several skeins of the same dye lot and the colors didn't match very well. But only one person said that, so I don't know if it's that big of a problem with this yarn. To me, this Dye Works yarn feels kind of like chenille with that kind of velvety texture. The yarn is soft, but it's also kind of structured because of this plush texture. So what are people making with it? Well, when I looked up on Ravelry, uh, there are less than 20 projects listed and most of them are hats. So here are a few hats to give you an idea how this yarn knits up. In this one, I think you can really see the texture of the yarn. 
I think my favorite project though is this cute stuffed elephant that turned out so adorable. Are you seeing an elephant theme here in this show? <laughs> So, okay, that gives you a little inspiration and some ideas of what to make with this yarn. And again, that is Dye Works by Yarn B. Okay, I have one more cotton acrylic blend yarn to show you, and that is this Yarn B's Urban Chic. This is a DK weight yarn that is 78% acrylic and 22% cotton. It's machine washable, lay flat to dry. These skeins are 100 grams with 284 yards, and the regular price is $5.50 at Hobby Lobby. According to the label, it suggests a needle size of a US 7 or 4.5 millimeter. It looks like there's just a handful of colorways, maybe eight or so, and that's all I could find. Um, the one that I have here is called Aqua, and it's got teal and turquoise, and a little bit of dark blue and pink and a little bit of orange in it. Again, with this one, there are not a lot of reviews online, but all the ones I found were five star ratings. The reviewers were saying that they love the colors, the patterning that appears when the yarn is knit up, and they really like the pops of color. Plus they said it holds up really well in the wash. I didn't see any negative comments at all. Now I think this yarn is very soft and squishy and I find it pleasant to the touch. I went over to Ravelry to find out what projects are being made out of it. Um, there aren't thousands of projects like some other yarns I've reviewed, but I think I saw around 170, so at least there were a good number to look at for ideas. I saw a lot of shawls, and I think all of them were asymmetrical stripe shawls like this one. And this one, and I love this boomerang shawl that somebody made. There were also some hats like this one and this one, which show off the color patterning that the yarn makes. I also saw some socks that I think turned out really pretty like these and these. And I saw this adorable dress for a doll that I think would be a great use for this yarn. So that is a little bit about Urban Chic Yarn by Yarn B. When I was shopping for yarn at the big craft stores, I also found a couple of acrylic yarns that I thought were interesting because they're advertised as anti-pilling. As I've mentioned before, Acrylic yarn is notorious for forming pills, those little fiber clumps on the surface of fabric that make it look worn and unattractive. So I thought it was appealing that yarn companies are starting to sell acrylic yarn that is treated so that it won't form pills. And they say that if pills do form, they'll easily fall off in the laundering process so you don't have to use sweater shavers or special tools to remove the pills. Items made with these anti-pilling acrylic yarns are said to come out of the laundry looking fresh and new every time. Now you might wonder what they do to the yarn to decrease the pilling. Well one way is to chemically modify the acrylic polymers. This causes the fibers to weaken during the dye process so that any pills which form will easily fall off. Even though the acrylic fibers are weakened, they're still strong enough to work with and they won't fall apart. Acrylic is a synthetic fiber, so it's extremely strong and would be very difficult to break. Think of fishing line. If you tried to break that, you would cut your fingers before you would actually break the fiber. That's what acrylic is like. So when pills do form on regular acrylic, they are attached to the fabric very strongly but this modified acrylic is weakened a bit so that it's easier to break and that allows the pills to drop off more readily. Now one of these anti-pill acrylic yarns that I have is Deborah Norville Every Day by Premier Yarns. It's a worsted weight yarn and the suggested needle size is a US size eight or five millimeter. Each skein is 100 grams and 180 yards and you can get it at Joann's for around $5 uh, regular price. There are 
40 different colorways in the solids, plus 30 variegated colors and 13 colors in heathers. The one here I have is called Blue Tone, and I think it's one of the heathers. It's kind of a denim blue with some lighter blues in there. Uh, the yarn is machine washable and tumble dry. Now there are 130 reviews of this yarn on Joanne's website and 87% of them are five star ratings. Most people love it, saying the color selection is great, it's soft and doesn't have knots in the skeins and the anti-pilling is a bonus. There were hardly any negative reviews, but the few comments on this side talked about the yarn giving off fuzz while they were knitting with it. So that's something to be aware of. For my opinion, I think this yarn is very soft. It does seem to have a bit of a halo, um, a little fuzzy, uh, looks a little fuzzy in the skein. Um, but let's take a look at some projects that are made with this yarn from Ravelry. There are almost 10,000 projects listed, so it is pretty popular. I saw a lot of baby items like these baby hats and this chevron baby blanket and this baby sweater. There were some cute little stuffed animals like these elephants, elephants again, <laughs> and this puppy. I also saw some adult hats like these and this beautiful lacy cardigan sweater. And what about these fingerless mitts? And this awesome keyboard scarf. And look at this stunning crocheted shawl and crocheted afghan. Wow, people are making some gorgeous projects with this yarn. And again, that is Deborah Norville Every Day by Premier Yarns. A similar yarn that I found at Hobby Lobby for $4 is this Yarn Bee Soft and Sleek yarn. It's another low pill acrylic yarn, worsted weight, and there are 208 yards in a 100 gram skein. The suggested needle size is a US 8 or 5 millimeter. It's also machine wash, but not tumble dry. There are 25 different colorways. Some are solid and some are variegated. This one that I picked up is called Purple and Gray Multi. I think there were around 30 online reviews for Soft and Sleek, and it got an average of 4.5 stars. People are loving that it's soft, lightweight, and smooth. They say that it is strong and durable and the colors are great. The biggest complaints that I saw were that it's often out of stock at local stores and people want more colors stocked in stores, but nothing really negative about the yarn itself. Now, personally, I think this is another nice, soft, beautiful yarn. Ravelry lists over 400 projects made out of it. There are some really lovely hats, and look at these gorgeous cabled fingerless gloves. I also found this cute baby hoodie. There are all kinds of baby blankets and afghans. And what about this brilliant Spider-Man blanket? Love it. Yeah, so that's a little inspiration for what to make with Yarn Bee's Soft and Sleek Yarn. Okay, these next workhorse yarns from the big craft stores are ones that have some wool in them. And this first one is one of my favorites that I've used a lot in the past, and that is Lion Brand Wool Ease. Wool Ease is 80% acrylic and 20% wool. It's worsted weight, and there are about 200 yards in a 100 gram skein. The suggested needle size is a US 8 or 5 millimeter, according to the label. The yarn is machine washable and tumble dry, so it's easy care. You can get Woolies yarn at Joann's and Michael's for around $4.50 a skein, regular price. It comes in 24 colorways. Some are solid and some are heathered. Um, like this one I picked up is called Blush Heather, and it's a very light pink with 
kind of peppered with a pearly white. Now there are over 500 reviews of Woolies online and over 80% are four and five star ratings. People who rated it highly said that it's beautiful, nice to work with, and the price is reasonable. It feels nice, it's warm and soft, comfortable, not bulky, and it holds its shape once knit up. On the other hand, those who gave it lower ratings said that it tangles easily, um, has knots in the skein, and they didn't really like the feel of it. Mostly though, they were complaining about the colors not being accurately represented online. Now personally, I think this yarn is really soft. I used to use it all the time when I was teaching students how to knit. It was a good worsted weight blend for them to start with and at an inexpensive price point. And that was a number of years ago. Um, I, when I just bought this one, I was thinking, wow, this is way softer than I remember. I definitely could wear this around my neck as a scarf or as a hat. And I actually made this hat um, with this yarn out of the colorway navy blue. I just did a two by two ribbing at the bottom and then continued in stockinette stitch for the rest and put a pom-pom on the top. I'm going to donate this hat to charity and definitely will be making more. On Ravelry, there are over 84,000 projects made out of this yarn, so it's pretty popular. There are lots of baby things like this baby vest, baby jacket, and another adorable stuffed elephant. For adult projects, I saw this beautiful pullover sweater and this cardigan. And what about this blanket? I just love this. So Woolies is certainly another one of those yarns that can be used for so many different types of projects. And I thought that I would also mention that it does come in a bulky weight yarn called Woolies Thick and Quick. And it's the same composition, 20% wool and 80% acrylic. So if you're looking for something similar in a bulky weight, um, this, this is another workhorse yarn that you could use. Okay, my last yarn today is another workhorse yarn from the big box stores, and that is Peyton's Classic Wool Worsted. It is 100% wool, and I'm sure it's not merino because it's not that soft. I mean, it's not bad. I don't think it's super scratchy or anything, but you can just tell it's wool. One skein contains 210 yards in 100, and gr 100 grams, and as the name says, it is worsted weight yarn. The suggested needle size is a US 7 or 4.5 millimeter. The care instructions are hand wash and lay flat to dry, which is not surprising because it's not super wash wool. It is available at Joann's for $7 per skein regular price. It comes in 49 different colorways, and some are solid color, some are variegated, and some are marled. Marled just means that the yarn is plied, where some plies are colors, and some are white, so you get the barber pulling effect. Anyway, the reviews for this classic wool worsted are very positive. On Joann's website, there are about 200 reviews, and 94% are four and five star ratings. Those who love it say that it's easy to work with, high quality, warm, excellent color selection, and a good price. There were a very limited number of low ratings, but those individuals said that there were knots in the skein, that it smells bad, which I don't think so, and, and that it was uncomfortable to wear. You know, I think this is one of those yarns that you need to go to the store and feel it for yourself. I personally think that it's soft enough, but it is a little rougher than these other yarns that I've talked about today. Um, but I think it would be great for things like hats, mittens, or felted items. Let's go on over to Ravelry and see what projects are made out of it there. Um, this is another popular one. There are over 80,000 projects made out of Peyton's Classic Wool Worsted Yarn. There are a ton of felted projects. Take a look at these stunning felted clogs. And what about these felted boots? 
and this gorgeous felted bag and a felted hat. You can even make a simple little felted bowl like this one. There are some cute stuffed animals like this cute hedgehog and this amazing horse. I don't know if I saw any elephants for this one. <laughs> Quite a number of people are making sweaters out of this yarn, like this pretty cardigan and this pullover. So there's a bit of inspiration for you so you can see what people have made out of this yarn. And again, that is Peyton's Classic Wool Worsted. And that wraps up my review of nine workhorse yarns from cotton to wool that you can find at the big box stores. And now it's your turn to go down to the comment section and share your favorite workhorse yarns. Are you familiar with any of the yarns that I talked about today and have you used them? And what projects did you make? And if you haven't used them, which ones are you intrigued and likely to, to try? I'm always eager to hear your experiences. I love hearing from you and I love it when you share your experiences that help us all out. Well, that brings us to the end of today's show. I hope you found this review of workhorse yarns from the big craft stores to be useful and interesting. And this concludes my series on big box bargains. But if you have any other ideas for future videos along these lines, please let me know down below. As always, I will include links to everything I talked about today in the information box below. Just click on show more to open up the box and you'll see all the links there. Please also let me know in the comment section if you have any questions about today's show, ideas for future show topics, or for product tests. I'm always adding to my lists and truly enjoy interacting with you. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today and I'll see you in the next video. Next week, I'm gonna be talking about circular knitting machines. I did a live broadcast on Periscope a couple of years ago on this topic and it was very popular. And I've, al I've also noticed that since then, the circular knitting machines are getting more and more common. A lot of people are trying them out for making socks especially, but what else can you make with them? Well, I'll be covering that as well as giving an overview of these knitting machines. And we'll be talking with Jamie Mayfield, whose family owns the Erlbacher Gearhart brand of circular knitting machines here in the US. I love seeing these machines in action as well as learning about them. And I hope you do too. So please come back and join me again next week. And until then, stay smart and have a sparkly week and happy Valentine's Day.